Welcome to Encyclopedia Commanderica, the segment where we go into the Gatherer website and click on random cards over and over and over and over. And then we talk about how we would, or would not, use those cards in Commander. Eventually, after the heat death of our solar system and the gravitational decay of our known universe, we will have talked about every single Magic the Gathering card in a Commander context. Well, Philip, I'm sure happy you're joining us today for this episode of Commandera. I can't say that bloody word. <laughs> yes, yes. I thought I thought today I would bring the Grumpus with me. The, oh, the Thrashing Grumpus. <laughs> yes, excellent. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, Nathaniel cannot be with us today. Sorry, state of affairs. Yes. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let's talk about our first card. Um... First card randomly generated today is. What would you like to start, Philip? Card one! Hull Breach. That's hard to keep up. <clears throat> yeah, yes it is. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hull Breach. Red and a green. Sorcery. Choose one. Destroy target artifact. Or destroy target enchantment. Or destroy target artifact and target enchantment. <laughs> well. Why would you ever not choose the second one unless there was no target? Yeah, unless unless you control one of those two. Uh, this is uh, a bit of a staple in Gruul decks, is it not? Yes, it is. I've used it many, many times. Um, it could only be improved by being made into an instant, but it's pretty perfect. It's a solid, you know, B choice for a Gruul colored deck. Yeah, it's a it's a great card. It took me a long time to even discover this, but the moment I did, I purchased it. For only two mana to have such flexibility, and if you can get the two for out of it, that's that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's half a decimate, and you don't have to have the two targets on the table, yeah. so it's in some ways slightly better than a decimate. And uh, yeah. Nate, who is uh, currently on assignment assassinating somebody, <laughs> he, he is the silent killer, after all. Um because it's the quiet ones you have to watch. Yep. So Nate says, An excellent start to this list. Hull Breach and the big sibling Decimate appear often in my red-green decks. He means cruel. Cruel. Cruel, which is cool. Which I think moves us swiftly along to... Card 2. <laughs> yeah, you didn't do a card 1. I was thrown by it. This is, this is after all, dear listener, my first uh, Encyclopedia Commanderica... I pronounce it slightly different with the um, American Southern California accent. And Yeehaw! Yeehaw! It's Encyclopedia right? Command, Erica! <laughs> Hang on, California, that's surfer talk. Oh, it's like Encyclopedia Command, Erica, dude. Because <laughs> that's how all Californians talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to practice my <laughs> surfer accent. Um, so, card two. Sorry. Card two. Palaka Worm. So, Palaka Worm is four mana and three green for a creature worm that's a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. It's uh, when Palaka Worm enters the battlefield, you gain seven life. And when Palaka Worm dies, draw a card. Uh, this is a great card. Yeah, I think I underestimate it because it consistently makes it into my first deck list. Because, of course, every deck I play has green in it. And then it always gets cut in the final list. And I think it's because I don't value that seven life enough. I suppose if I had a uh, had something that uses like Conjurer's Closet or more Flicker, I'd use Palaka Worm a lot more. Yeah, um, our correspondent Nathaniel Burgessington uh, <laughs> suggests it for a Maelstrom Wanderer deck. It's not in my Maelstrom Wanderer deck. Why? The only thing that puts me off it is that triple green. It's hard. It's hard. And I took Kiki Jiki out of Maelstrom Wanderer because of triple red. Um, but this card's only an uncommon. It costs pennies or cents. You know, it's it's worthy of its place in, I think, a two-color deck. But triple green puts me off it in triple-color decks. Yeah, it's it's really tough. I play a lot of triple-color decks, too. And this is not in Marith. It's not, in, it's not even in Karametra. And, and it's tough, man. It's tough. It's like 
for that three green mana, you have to you'll end up holding it probably. I don't know. It just never makes the cut. I I do yeah. I do like it, and I went out and I purchased one of these before Conspiracy because I was like, wow, this is great, and then I realized I cut it. I think to to seven gaining seven life isn't particularly powerful. It's not unhelpful, but it's not huge. Right. So how when is seven mana okay for draw a card like can tripping on a seven seven trample? It's not terrible. It's just there are. It needs a specific deck. So Maelstrom Wonder is a good example because it's a card deck that's going to cheat it into play. There are other ways of abusing it. Anyway, I think we've looked too long at this card now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely. There'll be people out there that love this card. I know that for a fact. Sure. They're screaming at us right now going, what? That's an A+. plus Also included in anything that's running green, but yeah. Yep. Anyway. Agree. Card three. Deny reality. Three... Blue and black, so for five converted mana cost, a sorcery with Cascade. And it says, return target permanent to its owner's hand. So you are the resident commander in Cascade and Demir player. That's true. I am both those things. Yeah. What do you think? Why do I not, why do I not run this card is uh, a question that you're going to ask me, isn't it? In fact, it is. I think five mana with Cascade, you try and strike a balance between the CMC of the card you're casting and the effect you're getting for that CMC. So, for example, Bloodbraid Elf, you're looking at four mana for a 3 2 creature with haste and Cascade. So, when you're hitting the Bloodbraid Elf, you're getting a lot of value. So, like, would you pay four mana for the effect you're getting on the creature? So, for a 3 2 haste, with a surprise bonus, I think you would. Whereas a bounce for five at sorcery speed, unless you're doing some pretty hefty deck top manipulation, this card feels like it's not worth it. If it was counter target spell or if it was instant speed, I've noticed that's become a catchphrase of mine if it were instant speed. If it were instant speed, I think it would just about work, be worth it. But it wouldn't be common then. No, it certainly wouldn't be. Four mana. Four mana's weird as well. So when you do three mana with the Bloodbraid Elf, for example, because uh, it costs four to cast you Cascade for a three CMC or less card. When you do three mana with that, you're looking for very specific things in your deck. You can tune your deck to hit the Eternal Witness or the mana like ramp spell so the cultivate kadama's reach you want yeah that's right four five mana to cast this so you're going for a four spell it weirdly increases your chance to whiff so whereas with the actual maelstrom wanderer itself for example which is the most expensive cascade spell cost for eight so you're cascading for cmc sevens you're gonna you're trying to hit that big creature and if you do hit a kadama's reach or a cultivate yeah four is just a weird number for cascade Hmm. Mm. Yeah, it seems like uh, Maelstrom Wanderer kind of gets around that because it has uh, Cascade, comma Cascade, right? <laughs> and yeah, and so, so you you're, you're getting get two cards, and you're going to get your mana's worth out of uh, Maelstrom Wanderer. But this yeah, one, and if you don't, if you just hit ramp spells with Maelstrom Wanderer, um, it's just powering you up to kill the Maelstrom Wanderer and recast him. That's right. The next turn, and uh, so. but uh, and I I kind of that was my note because I don't play a lot of cascade cards yet and i was wondering <laughs> if it was if it was worth it like i started thinking about well if it, this is in a deck right what four mana cards do i really want to pull and am i going to pull one of those instead of the one mana cards or 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 even worse kind of a three mana card that isn't that doesn't have a massive impact and so i look at and this it is as, in demir as well so you're not going to get the could the ramp spells because you're in Demir Colors, well, which is really... Salt Eye. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. Hey, we may be joined by our correspondent. All right, let's... Nathaniel let's, Burgessington. Let's pause for a moment while we assess Mr. Burgessington's status. This is a break in the episode Whilst we contact Nate Nate has come out of hibernation 
He might be showering to wash the blood off. Remember, guns for show, knives for a pro. Well, he's here. So Deny Reality and Bituminous <laughs> Blast are both uh, five converted mana cost cascade spells that can be used as chaotic tutors in a Jaleva deck. So one of my versions was designed so that the only four CMC or lower cards in the Jaleva deck were mana rocks, equipment for Jaleva, utility creatures, and cheap board wipes like Toxic Deluge and Washout. So if I needed something in those categories, I play the Cascade and I take what comes up. And Cascade is a May cast ability, so if the board wipes are not appropriate, then I don't have to cast them. One downside of this approach is that you show a good chunk of your deck to the table. So they have more information about what your deck will be doing. Hmm. Well, yes. I mean, you, listeners would have already heard mine and Phil's opinion on this card. I'm, I'm not sold. Yeah. And it should play into my strength, but, you know. Well, Deny Reality is better than Bituminous Blast. But I really was using it for the Cascade. I took it out. I don't have it in the deck anymore. But it's a possibility. Anyway, card number four. Nate, would you like to read this one? Blighted Shaman. One in a black. Summon Cleric. It's a 1-1. One, one. If you tap him, he's got two tap abilities. You can sacrifice a creature, and target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Or you can tap him and sacrifice a swamp. Target creature gets plus one, <laughs> plus one until end of turn. <laughs> so this reminds me of uh, Nantuko Husk, which uh, showed up in recent Origins. I, I got some at the pre-release, but I didn't put them in my deck. But uh, they seem to be, uh, I, I'm not sure, but they seem to be popular in Origins drafts. Nantuko Husk is a um, a key card yeah. for various standard decks um, at the moment. It's horrendous. Nantuko Husk can repeat the effect. It doesn't have to tap to do it. This is to Nantuko Husk what, um, let's think, what Kanye West is to Freddie Mercury as frontmen. They both are performers, but one is considerably better than the other. <laughs> Oh, I saw a video where Kanye West was performing, well, quote, performing Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, that was a Glastonbury. Yeah. But Blighted Shaman, this is not great. I suppose as a sack outlet, if you uh, literally can't find anything else. Right. If you, if, if you ended up for some reason with your older sibling or slash uncle slash aunt's collection and maybe this one was really special and they just passed away and they said tell little Timmy to put blighted shaman in all his decks it's the key to Vic then maybe sure but otherwise unless that's happened (laughs) or if you want to pay for a bear and get half a bear, then, yep. then sure. Yeah, I just don't think Blighted Shaman is good. There are so many better. I mean, you look at Hell's Caretaker, granted a little bit more expensive a card, but Hell's Caretaker for uh, four mana, you have tapped to sacrifice a creature, but you get any creature you want back into play. It's just... You could even get Hell's Caretaker. Right, you could even get it if you wanted to do something really weird, you could do that. The card art, it looks like a regular guy wearing the skin of some kind of lizard creature. And he's raising some skeletons out of the ground. Yeah, points for the trippy old card art. Remember, they were doing a lot of drugs way back in the uh, mid-90s. He looks like he's wearing, for WoW fans out there, he looks like he's wearing a murloc suit. (laughs) He does. He does. Yeah. Anyway, uh... Phil, what number card are we on next? Card number five. Uh, Phyrexian Rager. <laughs> it's weird. Every time there's a, a really good Phyrexian card uh, release that I enjoy, I get a Phyrexian Rager. Mm-hmm. For two and a black, <laughs> you get Sorry. a creature horror, according to the card. 
um, a 2-2 creature horror, and when Phyrexian Rager comes into play, you draw a card and you lose one life. There's got to be a name for that ability by now, right? Because we see it coming up. What, draw a card, lose one life? It's yeah, an arena, a Phyrexian arena ability, I guess. Necropotence. Mm, yeah, sort of. So it should read, when Phyrexian Rager comes into play, Necropotence 1. Hmm. How cool is that? Hmm. Okay, so Phil, if you were going to run this card in a deck, okay. what... What excuse would you use to allow yourself to morally put it in a deck? Oh, this... You see that blue guy in the card art? He is so angry. He's <laughs> he's raging against the Phyrexian machines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the sound he's making. Because this Phyrexian is reaching one of those pointy needle fingers right into him. Like, right toward him. But what we don't see is the next scene where he snaps that off and he feeds it to him through that metal mask. He's so angry, he's attacking that Phyrexian yeah. with his throat by attacking his fist <laughs> with his throat. Well, he's allowing the Phyrexian to grab him so that he could then lever off of that and and just snap kick right into the Phyrexian, shattering its chest plate. He is the Phyrexian rager. I think he's using the power of words. See, if you read the flavor text, it says, It takes no prisoners, but it keeps the choicest bits for Phyrexia. And the choicest bits are the most devastating your mama slams in its insult repertoire as it rages against Phyrexia. Your mama is so Phyrexian, she's the reason Ourobrask is hiding. Your mama is so Phyrexian, Sabo Tevak goes to her for beauty advice. Your mama is so Phyrexian, when she asked Vorinclek's voice of hunger out to dinner, he said, no thanks, I am full. And so it, it just gets the Phyrexian mad, and he's pointing in his face saying, don't say that about my mama. And he's grabbing him by the throat, and it, it just, uh, yeah. So you take a damage because the, you get the Phyrexians mad, but you draw a card because they're, they're distracted and they drop stuff. That's great. That's much better than mine. An important question, would you play this card in a game of Commander? No. Play Bloodgift Demon instead. Um, Alicia Who Smiles at Death could recur this guy for a cheaper version of Bloodgift Demon. Why not just play Phyrexian Arena? Yeah, that too. For the or same CMC? Of there's, a, there's a place for it in Carador. It's kind of cheap card draw, right? But but Carador is, is playing much better cards at that point. Yeah, it depends on your commander having recursion tricks. Compare it to um, what's another creature? So for one more mana, Solemn Simulacrum, <laughs> or uh, for one less mana but it harder to cast color, Baleful Strix. I don't even think it's in the same league. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it's one of the older style. They're still coming up with uh, how to draw cards in black. Yeah, they were getting there, though. By this point, they knew how to draw cards in black. They were yeah, in... it wasn't Fraxian Arena in the same set. Uh, this they're is Invasion. Yeah, so they're they're sticking to the theme. That's Onslaught, not Invasion. But yes, it, um, yeah. Yeah, the... Uh, I don't you See, by then they had already had the summer... Uh, what is it? The summer, summer of Necropotence. Right. And so they already knew how to draw cards by then. <laughs> Yeah, but this one only does it once, rather than however many times you feel. Like. Yeah. Potence. God bless Necropotence. <laughs> yeah, there's at least one of those in that deck that I said I lost. So. Mm. Um, next. So. Next card. So I don't Cards! think I don't think any of us would play the Phyrexian Rager, would we? No, and I yeah. do love Phyrexia. I mean, I might as a desperate. It's all right, and Alicia smiles at death. Someone said. That might be it. You hear what he said, Nate? All the Americans sound alike. Mm. Card six. Card number <laughs> six. Ronin War Club. This is three mana. For an artifact equipment, equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, attach Ronin War Club to that creature. And it has an equip cost of five. But essentially the equip cost is zero because you're... Casting creatures and getting it on for free. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's well, not, not even a May ability. So whenever a creature comes in, you take put the work club on it. You don't get a choice. Yeah, it's all right. Like there's no control over it. It's not a UMA. So I really need plus two, plus one on something but for some reason. Let's say a Voltron Commander is the obvious choice, but you can't keep it on there <laughs> unless you are running a creatureless deck. Right, unless it's like Shu Yun. I mean, but Shu Yun has a couple of creatures in. Not many, though. No, but they're recursion type creatures, aren't they? But, eh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so rather than suggest talk about this card, let's suggest cards that are better, that do the same thing. I'd take Hero's Blade, or if my yeah. commander was a warrior, I would use Obsidian Battle Axe, which gives you haste. Brawler's Plate, which gives you trample. I'm thinking uncommon or common equipments that give you a small power and toughness buff and uh, something. Oh, Ashling the Pilgrim does well with uh, Tenzo Godo's Mall. Yep. Just... We could be here a while listing things better yeah. than Road and Walk. Because there are many, many cards better than, than this. So uh, so you would put this in your Nahiri deck as equipment slot number 47. Yes, and every time mm. Nahiri created a new core token that doesn't have haste, the Road and Walk Club would come onto it. And, hmm. uh, yeah. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even put this in a Nahiri deck, right? As, as the 47th equipment choice. Anyway, well, next hmm. card... Card 7. Skyshaper. 2 mana. Artifact. Sacrifice. Skyshaper. Oh my god. <laughs> Sacrifice. It, it's so bad. Speaks like William. William. Shatner. Shatner. Sacrifice. Skyshaper. Creatures you control. Gain flying until end of turn? <laughs> <laughs> You realize Truncate Silence is going to remove all of those gaps. I'll try to keep those in. That'll sound weird. Uh, um, yeah. No, but when you really need people to fly for a turn. I thought of one use for this. Yeah. Glissa the Traitor Infect. Because Glissa's, you, if you sacrifice the artifact, you can get it back. And Infect, if you have mass flying, that's a win condition. It is. It's true. And I guess there aren't going to be many ways to give everything flying that inexpensively. It's it's not terrible. Like outside of Glissa, you'd have to go into blue, but wander in your graveyard. I'll do it. Yeah, Archetype of imagination. Yeah, but He's again, the king of flying. There's a few other bits and bobs, isn't there? Do you have this in your Glissa deck? I haven't updated. I haven't played my Glissa deck in a long time, so no. Mm. Well then, moving along. Card number eight. <laughs> Do you want to read this one, Nate? Pillaging Horde. Two and two red. Creature, human, barbarian, five, five. Hey, what's it do? When Pillaging Horde enters the battlefield, sacrifice it. Unless you discard a card at random. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but, but it's only four mana. Yeah, for a 5-5. Five, five. So if, if uh, Crash the Blood Braided really needs uh, five counters on him immediately, you could cast this guy and he goes straight to the graveyard. <laughs> if it wasn't at random, it might be okay playing with graveyard strategy. But at random, since you lose that control over it. I wish it had trample. Oh, it would be good then. It would be more thematic because it would be yeah. pillaging. Yeah. Well, it, or haste it'd be or a something. Horde. It'd be a horde. If it yeah, a horde trample. should have trample. Yeah. And it was a, originally in Portal as a rare. Oh, there you go. As a rare. Oh, God. Yeah, can you imagine? You buy one pack of Portal. <laughs> oh, has it got that Imperial Seal in it? Has it got that? Oh. <laughs> oh. Pillaging horde. Yeah. <clears throat> no, move along. Yes, yes, yes. Card number nine. Copy Artifact. For one in a blue, an enchantment. The original text says, Select any artifact in play. This enchantment acts as a duplicate of that artifact. It is affected by cards that affect either enchantments or artifacts. <laughs> I'm done. The copy remains even if the original artifact is destroyed. Enchantments and the original artifact are not copied. If you give me a moment, I'll look up the... Uh, 
The Oracle text says, copy target artifact. Yeah, really. You may have copy artifact, enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield, except it's an enchantment in addition to its other types. So, this is good. This is a good card. For two mana, that's really good. How much is Sculpting Steel? Three? Yeah, Sculpting Steel's three. And Phyrexian uh, Metamorph is uh, pretty much three. Three slash four. Um, Clever Impersonator is uh, four. The, uh, what's it called? Masterwork of Engineer is only one, but it only does equipment. This is a very playable card, and if you're in a clone type strategy, or you care about artifacts, or you're doing artifact heavy deck, um, especially like the Arkham Dagson mono blue type ones, this is a great Big card. Mono blue artifact cheaters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a great card. Yeah, this is. I'm actually brewing a Bant Enchantress deck, and this is in that because, well, why wouldn't it be, right? I hate you, Phil. Um, I hate you. <laughs> It's, I mean, look at the worst case. The worst case is you copy some cheap one mana artifact like Soul Ring. Oh, no, no one plays that. Right. Or or Mana Vault, which is a little bit more rare. No one it? plays that. No one plays that. Or, uh, what is it? Skull Clamp. <laughs> no one plays that. <laughs> and these are all artifacts we would actually pay more than one mana for. And here, you know, so we get we get another copy of it. Yay. Yep. And Zer the Enchanter, too. He can tutor this up. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was nine, wasn't it? Card number ten. <laughs> Razor Tooth Rat. Two and a black for a creature rat. That's a 2-1. Oh, yes, it is. It's got fear and nothing else. There you go. Surely it must have haste. Nope. I tell you what, though. Death touch. Men and rats both hunger. For we are playthings. They for us. No, we hunger sense. for our playthings. Yes, men and rats both hunger. We for our playthings. They for nope. us. No, I prefer the slightly, slightly <laughs> jazz version I did. And as we all know, jazz, jazz sucks. Is shite. Um, so, if only one of us played a rat themed deck and could comment on this, Nate. Yeah, if only one of us played a rat themed deck. And surely this is in that rat themed deck because. More rats I have well. a Maronar deck, but oh. this is not good enough for it because basically with my Maronar deck, I have to ask each rat, are you better than another relentless <laughs> rat? <laughs> and if you're not, then I have a relentless rat instead. So I'm trying to think of rats that are better than relentless rats, and I'm going with two that spring to mind, or at least equal to, are Crypt Rat and Pack Rat. Uh, Crypt Rat is in there. Pack Rat used to be. Uh, the other ones are mainly ninjas. And uh, oh, yeah, Ogre Slumlord as well. Yeah, Ogre oh, Slumlord is excellent. Is that all your rats have death touch? And you get free rats whenever anything dies. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, the first, So when I got back into Magic during RTR block, um, the first booster pack I bought after a, a 10 year hiatus had a foil Ogre Slumlord in it. Anyway, Shiny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we have a little surprise that Nate won't know about. Um, we played Magic this morning with two of our listeners, Mister Rogue Artificer and friend of the show Nick Jaragoski, and they each randomly clicked a uh, so they each clicked a random card button on Gatherer for us, and this is what they got for us. Mm-hmm. The first one, and this is a, a truly amazingly powerful card, is Benelish Infantry. Uh, Phil, do you want to read this? Because I, d- I don't think I can really contain my excitement over it. Oh, I can easily contain my excitement over this one. Two and a white <laughs> for a, uh, a, a probably a human soldier? Uh, yeah, it's a human soldier now. It's a 1-3 human soldier with... Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, with banding. <gasps> the, pa- the ability they it was so powerful they only printed it once. See, uh, we're gonna joke. We're about to joke an awful lot about banding. I, I want you to know, <laughs> I'm gonna build a banding deck. <laughs> banding is the splice of combat tricks. Indeed. Oh, Wait, banding so the rules interactions are so sh- boop. Well, uh, they're so awful and tricky and complicated and. 
not powerful. Like you do a lot of mental work to get no real discernible good effect out of it. Well, you do this, right? With banding, you're like, okay, so my 1-3 is going to band with my 5-5. Five, five, and he's doing, all right, he's doing like eight points of damage. So, uh, but what if I reassign? Uh, uh, oh, wait, I lose all my creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, what I think is we're going to see a, a, a revision to banding that's basically <laughs> something nice and simple. Uh, I don't know what it'll be called. It'll be called something like Boop. or whatever. And <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll just simply say the controller of this creature assigns combat damage to this creature and one other creature it's attacking with. That already exists, but uh, they'll just keyword it? Yeah, well, not even keyword. It'll be an ability word. Okay, so the ability would be called not banding. Yeah, not banding. Or this sucks less than banding. So thanks, Rogue Artificer, for that. I deeply suspect you randomly picked that out because you wanted to hear us suffer trying to discuss banding in a commander context. Which we've not actually done. Would you put this in a commander deck, fellas? I would put it in my Dagatar deck. Dagatar. Dagatar. Really? No. <laughs> is that because your Dagatar <laughs> deck is where cards go to die? It's because his Dagatar deck will never be built. My Dagatar <laughs> deck is waiting for the rest of the cards to be designed that will make the deck good. Yeah, in like 20 years, right. that Dagatar deck will rip. Gonna kick the hell out of things. Yep. So, uh... Bonus card two from friend of the show, Nicholas Jaragoski. Nivix, area of the Firemind. It's a land. Tap, add one colourless mana to your mana pool. Tap two, a blue and a red, and then tap the card. Exile the top card of your library. Until your next turn, you may cast that card if it's an instant or a sorcery. So... Here's the challenge. We have to discuss this card without mentioning a certain is it Paragon? <laughs> is it possible? Is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> this is... A vo they did a cycle of um, uncommon lands in uh, the RTR block um, about the guild's new guild houses. So it was Nivix, there was like Dusk Mantle was the Demir one. I forget all their names. Well, this was in in Guild Pact. So the oh, was, oh, was it in the first? Yeah, time? the original. Yeah. Okay. It has a community rating of one and a half stars. One and a half? Someone yeah. liked it. Because I'm I'm looking at this. This is, this is terrible. Because it only works until... Um, I, I had to look up the ruling on this. It only works until your next turn. And their ruling is, until your next turn means the effect wears off as soon as your next turn starts, even before you untap. It's basically the same as until the end of the turn of the player who immediately precedes you. Yeah. Oh. All right. Does it give sorceries flash? No. You still have to cast them at the right time. Because hmm. you may cast, still means you have to cast it legally. Yeah, that silences you thinking about how crap this card is. If it was only two mana to activate an is it and tap it, you might. But four mana is so expensive to add on to... to so you might only run this in a uh, Melek deck where you can see the top of your deck so you know that you can cast a card deeper. Yeah, that's true. If you're looking at... So a Melek deck or a Teamer deck, right? That's probably the easiest way to um, to use this card. And if you see that the top card is an instant, then you blast it out on your opponent's turn. Yeah. And you better have Melek out. Uh, he wouldn't trigger Melek mm. because you exile it before casting it. <sighs> <laughs> I think. Uh, hmm. I think Zadahedron Grinder goes into Melek decks. Not that that has anything to do with this card, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just. Thanks for that aside. <laughs> but we, we see the tangent there. Um, yeah. I see the connections. It's like a web. Well, okay. Um, as you would know, I would never go off on a random tangent about stuff. No, but. no. So Thanks this is my first no. Encyclopedia uh, Command Erica. I'll try to pronounce that the British way. Encyclopedia Command Erica. Oh, it hurts to say it that way. It feels like there are extra U's in it. But how do what? we... How do we... <laughs> 
How do we wrap these? I will these? kick your arse. Yeah. How do we what? So we wrap these. Oh, uh, we uh, just chat about stuff until we say something really funny and then we cut. <laughs> yeah, that's generally how it goes. We chat nonsense for a bit. Well, okay then. And then I had to flip the car over and it wouldn't even start. <laughs> <laughs> And that's our show.